and you smell it, you know what to do, right? Avoid it. Get off the side of the road or, you know, take another route, stay away from it or get in front of it. Everybody agree? So now imagine back in the day, right, when you went hunting and you were, we were walking around in loincloths and sticks with spearheads on them. And you were hunting an animal and you came across a pile of shit, right? Oh, that's a new pile of shit. So what do you, what would you do? You know, you went over and smelled it. And I tell you, it was all shitty, so you may even have tasted it. How do you like that? Yeah, stick it in your fingers. It's palatable. You can tell what it had been. No, I'm not joking. Yo, people who really hunt do this stuff for a living now. They cover themselves in urine, yeah? Are y'all didn't know that? People who are really into hunting, they cover themselves in animal urine, so the animal gets confused and not realizing that they're human. It's not fun. And they'll go around. Yeah, no, it's not fun. It's not. But what's fun is putting the bullet in their head and walking home with the prize, right? Yeah. So, what, what, what's the matter? <laughs> you get all worked up? Are you getting all worked up because I killed Bambi? Uh, <laughs> damn, it's just a theoretical Bambi now. I relax. <laughs> you gotta take my head off already. So anyway, you know, imagine us because we gotta survive. So what do we do? We go and we look at the texture of the fecal material. We look at it. We see, hey, what's in the fecal material? Where has this animal been eaten? Yeah, exactly. Do you remember the smell? As disgusting as it is. Do you remember the texture? Again, you may have remember you tasted it. Maybe you even smeared some on. I'm not joking. You do whatever to find that animal because you want to eat it, yeah? So the next time you smell it, what? There's a link, there's an emotional link to that. You remember. Guys, this is how we're wired. This is how we've always been wired. All right? This is why things that are, like, things that we can link to emotion when we're learning is quite powerful because it gets uploaded to the brain immediately. It bypasses all circuitry and goes right up into the brain. That's why I try to get, I break, I crack jokes and make fun of myself and, you know, make fun of life situations and things like that and give you stories and, so that you can, you can relate it and it can be fun because if I can make it fun, then I can load it up, I can load this information up to your brain quicker. So then you go home, you read it, you reinforce it, boom, you got it. You got me? So this is how we're wired. This is how we're wired. So traumatic events, same thing. You know, so that, that one time you was chasing an animal and all of a sudden you realized you heard, you, you decided to go by yourself instead of going with a couple companions. And all you heard was, right? And you know the smell, you know what the creature looks like too, because you've already killed one. And, and by the sound of the crunch behind you, you could, you could give or take, figure out how big the damn animal is, right? The one that you're hunting now. And you either turn around and look and then be like, ah, right? And then the animal eats you. Or you realize, yeah, hey, at this point, I'm not even gonna look. I'm just gonna run. You got me yet? <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't sure have this happened to this guy. He goes out hunting, he's hunting deer. But he's, you know, he's, he's a big, brave man. All by himself, he's hunting with a bow and arrow. And he's in a ravine. A ravine is it's like a little, it's like a little gully. And it's steep enough where you can't go uphill. So he's cornered himself in this ravine thinking that he's got, he's got the deer. So he goes to shoot the deer, and the deer comes at him. And he's in a ravine that he can't get out of, and the deer goes back on its back hooves and starts slapping the dude around with his hooves. I'm not joking, look it up. He's on YouTube, bet you can find it. You got beat up, man. You got assaulted. <laughs> get that man's license plate, <laughs> All right? It's like, good for the deer, man. He got you back. You, you should have never went with the bow and arrow, right? Uh oh, you know, what do they say? You don't you don't come to a, you don't come to a gunfight with a slingshot, <laughs> all right? Yeah, you guys have heard that one before, all right? So, anyway. so yeah, you don't come to a gunfight with a slingshot, all right? <laughs> so yeah, he got beat. He got beat up. He's lucky. To, he's lucky he didn't get his life taken. Cause I know people who try to do that with moose, and I don't know about I don't know about y'all. I'm not hunting on moose. You ever see a moose? Yo, know, moose is like it's like a VW car. That's how much they weigh. They hit you, you done. <laughs> That's like getting hit by a horse. That's how big they are, and they are highly territorial. Like you guys see Jumanji? And their antlers. You guys see the new Jumanji when, when, when Black when, when when Jack Black is swallowed up by the hippopotamus? Yeah. You know, you guys see Yo, hippopotamus are dangerous. You know that is the most common attack in, in the African open water. And the rivers is the most common animal tag on the African continent is the hippopotamus. 
they do not like people messing around in their ponds, man. They just don't like it. They stay out of my waterway. <laughs> they love it. They'll bite down on the boats and break them, split them down the middle. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. All right. So, separate. Uh, again, we have that. So, these guys just elevate, but then we have these other muscles that are inside, guys. They're associated with the sphenoid bone because the way the sphenoid bone is positioned. The sphenoid bone has these lateral medial plates, they're called, the pterygoid plates. Not those pterygoid plates, but the pterygoid muscles. And the pterygoid muscles, they extend from the sphenoid bone to the mandible, but deep on this side. And what they allow is for the bone to shift back and forth together. So those muscles, those four muscle groups, are allowing us not only to elevate the mandible, but to shift the mandible back and forth. So as we chew, we're we're taking and pushing food back and forth over the teeth. Something we take advantage of, huh? We don't even think about it, man. We're doing this automatically. When we put food in the mouth, we automatically chew. We don't even think about it, All right? So this is why we have these bones here, guys. We have these bones here because we know we, we need those muscles, and we need those muscles, we better have those nerves. Did everybody understand? Now, I haven't talked to you about all the cranial nerves. There's only 12 cranial nerves. There's 12 in total, so. Cranial nerves 1 through 12. There's only 12 cranial nerves. And I've already talked to you about cranial nerve number 1, which would be olfactory nerves. Cranial nerve number 2, which are the optic nerves. Cranial nerve number 1, why? Because they're associated with ethmoid bone. Cranial nerve number 2, why? Because they're associated with sphenoid bone. Cranial nerve number 8. Cranial nerve number 8, which is associated with this guy sitting in the temporal bone. So this whole, this whole hearing and balance apparatus this whole thing this whole thing sits in the temporal bone and the nerve that comes out of there goes back that's cranial nerve number eight and that's called the vestibulo cochlear nerve But again, I'm not here to teach you all the cranial nerves. I'm just here to teach you. I just taught you the, the, the three of the 12 cranial nerves that are responsible for sensation, special sensation of the face. Everybody got me? Smell is a special sense. Yes? Sight is a special sense. Hearing and balance is a special sense. The other special sense is touch, or touch isn't so special. <laughs> That's not true either, right? This touch can be special, right? <laughs> but taste is considered a special sound, right? Why? Because they're just focused here. And then, of course, speech, which is not sense, right? It's a combination of sense with motors. Speech isn't, isn't a special sense. It's a special motor. Everybody hear me? So speech is special motor. Whereas you have special sensory, you have special motor. Special motor for la 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 la. Right? You hit all the and la 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 la. Right? You get you force the air through the nasal cavity. You hit higher higher frequencies. Right? You put it down further. You get lower frequencies. So this is how you're able to sing different different notes. Okay. Any questions so far? So remember we were talking about this the other day. You watch a good boxing match. Right, oh, flyweights. Why do I say flyweights? Because fly the flyweights, man, they get flyweights, right? They lightweights, they, yeah. they hit each other hard, but they're not knocking each other out. And, uh, and you watch it in slow mo and you see the, the whole the fizzle. Ooh, they come back and step back. And then it'll make you think twice about the fact that you think that bone is this kind of solid, kind of non movable, non flexible kind of thing. Uh huh. Right, you can just see it when somebody gets punched in the face. They're, they're, you, you can see their bones actually flex. This is why afterwards they look like what? They ran into a wall. Right, look at Mickey Rourke. Right, he looked like he ran into a seawall <laughs> at least fifteen times. Right, damn man, I feel sorry for that brother, man. Jeez, and he's still out of boxing. Had a coconut growth. Believe it or not, he was a local. You guys didn't know that? Mickey Rourke, famous actor in Nine and a Half Weeks and super steamy movies, right? They're close to like rated Z, rated X. Kind of, they didn't know what to rate them. That is not rated. They showed it only at night for the adults. Right? What are you asking me? Did he go to Beach Yeah, he's a local. He was a local, yeah. And he, he, 
I used to fight at this coconut grove gym. I didn't look at his face, right? I mean, if you guys have seen him in uh, that, The Wrestler, right? I think you work in The Wrestler now. It's a movie. The, his face is all pulverized up, man. This is what happens. You, you, you keep getting punched. And I can tell you somebody, I know somebody who got punched hard enough by a couple people while he was handcuffed to a pole, right? Because he started a bar fight. And sure enough, he had fractures in his ethmoid and his frontal bone. And sure enough, you think he's got problems with smell? Sure enough, the guys, right above here is your frontal lobes. So you think you got problems with decision making? You're going to find out that the frontal lobes are involved with, you know, poniendo un freno, a primitive brain. So your frontal lobes are what really make you think as a human. And they, they, they you know, you, you don't. You know, most of us don't act on primitive urges, right? You, you kind of think twice, oh, I can't, I can't do that, I can't do this, right? Like, you know, most people, again, you know, you get that axe murderer, Jeffrey Dahmer, or whatever, you know, you get those weird people who, who just don't know, like this kid who decided to just go off and shoot all these kids in high school, right? This, trust me when I tell you, you get enough brain damage, you get enough hits to the head, you play football, whatever. You get hit with a ball in the head, you get hit with a bat in the head, you, you go skiing regularly, you're doing flips and tricks like I was, yeah? Your ability to make good decisions can be completely damaged forever because you start messing around with the skull. You understand, guys? An adult skull, there's no room for nothing but what's there. Can't have any extra fluid, whether it comes from blood or from the brain itself. Can't be excess there because it'll squeeze the brain right through the skull. Does everybody hear me? That's no good. Brain herniation, no good. Can't have that. This is why you, if you suspect any head trauma, straight to the OR, all right? The, the OR has, the, the OR is special for head trauma. They have CAT scan right there in the OR. They'll take the CAT scan right there. They'll do, they'll, they'll, they'll actually, they, they'll, they can put, they can bore small needle holes in there and then they put large needles in to extract the fluid almost immediately. So they have ways of guiding the needles in Right, and then and then not having to cut if they have to, then you know if it's big enough or massive enough, the hematoma they'll break the skull. Over. Not easy. I'm telling you right now, not easy. And sure enough, when you pop the skull cap, sounds just like that. Sounds just like that because the fluid is fluid build up and it's vacuumed in there. So when you go to pull the skull cap off, right, it's it's it's, uh, it's quite amazing. All right, any questions on this? So this is skull. Multiple centers of ossification, multiple bones. Got me? All trying to figure out what to do around arteries, veins, and nerves. Yes? There's three separate sutures. So you have uh, the sagittal suture, the frontal suture, and the lambdoidal suture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other sutures, yeah, underneath, the, you get the, the, the this is, suture it's more like a line that splits so when you flip the skull over you'll see the maxillary bones fuse and then right behind them are the two palatine bones that fuse as well and make the hard palate that's where you're not you know when you when you don't have that and then anything goes down mm, 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 nasal cavity so I a friend of mine her father was that way so he you know there are three boys three Irish boys all redheads the father was a redhead the daughter was a redhead they're all redheads and cute as a button the whole family I have no clue how the hell they understood their dad. Their dad went to school with my dad, and my dad understood him. And I, every time he spoke, I was like, I just shook my head respectfully. I was like, man, I was like, dude, I don't be disrespectful. What the hell did your dad just say to me, man? <laughs> I said, no clue. Because it sounded so hard to hear him because of that nasal reverb that was constant, because he, he got the lip fixed. And you'll see it. Because when the lip is fixed, you'll see, you can see the scarred suture. When they suture the skin, they do. But you'll now they don't. You know, you rarely ever see a child that, that has their, their 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 palate clefted that they don't put some artificial bone in there early on, and then send them to speech therapy just to make sure that there isn't any lisp and that they're able to pronounce properly. So it's it's quite amazing how far we've come with correcting uh, the cleft palate, um, and and it's. Some of it's quite extensive. This is early in embryological development, guys, that we fuse the maxillary bones. You understand? So these maxillary bones need to fuse properly. Otherwise, if they don't fuse, if you don't get fusion, 
you get that split, and get that margin doesn't fuse, then that's going to be your cleft palate. How does that affect your breathing? Like from uh, inhaling through your nose? Uh, it doesn't because remember your nasal cavity is still there, but it will. What it does, what it will do, is it'll affect your ability to phony. You you don't realize it. Every time you speak, your tongue is bouncing off the roof of your mouth. Of course. You know, if that roof is not there, then then the, the sounds that you're trying to make are going to travel right up into the nasal cavity, and that's where everything sounds nasal. Right. And it's very it's very difficult to distinguish when it's really really bad. It's very difficult to distinguish sound, sounds. So they have to go to speech therapy. He, I'm sure he went to speech therapy just for him to be able to speak the way he did. And he, you know, he, he used to trip me out because he used to, he, used to, he was really super sweet guy, sweetest kind of world. He would come and he would do the umpiring for the little league. Okay. He would come and every afternoon once he was done work, he would come and he would lay the chalk down for the games. And and never forget, he's a super sweet guy, super sweet guy. Uh, he also had the local shop that did the tackle tool. So when you see me come in with my Philadelphia stuff, it's got my name on the back. It's from the shop that he had that his daughter took over and then they sold. So um, Fieldsy was his name, super, super sweet guy. But he had he, he always had that, that, that problem. So when people used to talk to him, some people could understand him, people who knew him could understand him because they grew up with him. But for me, it was very difficult. His sons, they had no problem. His, his children never had the problem. Never had a problem understanding it, but I just couldn't. I found it really, really difficult. And that's from that, again, from that maxillary bone, not fusing guys, all right? So, pretty much done the skull. Make sure you go over that. Look at, I want you to look at the vertebra, because we're gonna spend a lot of time on the vertebra, and we're gonna talk about the long bones as well when we meet up. So we're gonna finish axillary skeleton and start appendicular skeleton. So make sure you go and you look at that, all right? Next class is test, yeah? No. Not next class. Not next class. Next Thursday. Next Thursday is the test, yeah. No, not this Thursday. Next Thursday. You're trying to get everybody ahead. You're trying to get everybody ahead.